Many organometallic compounds are very reactive at carbon, very high energy. And this raises the question of how in the world do we make these in the first place. In this video, we're going to cover methods for the synthesis of organometallic compounds through a few different approaches. The first approach is to notice that typical organometallic reagent, R minus M plus, looks like the conjugate base of some carbon acid, RH. So for example, if we treat a hydrocarbon with a strong enough base to deprotonate it, we can generate an organometallic species in which the metal counter ion that came along with the base gets together with R- to form the organometallic species R- M+. And the mechanistic idea here is simply deprotonation. This extremely strong base, M+, B-, deprotonates RH. B minus becomes BH, the conjugate acid of the base, and M plus gets together with R minus. This idea is very common in the synthesis of organolithiums, for example, where it often goes by the name lithium hydrogen exchange, since it looks like lithium, Li plus, is taking the place of H plus in the original hydrocarbon. And the base we often use is actually an organolithium itself. So this compound that you see being used as the base is butyl lithium. We often abbreviate it as buli, B-U-L-I, or as N buli, N for normal, since this is a linear chain of four carbons. And mechanistically, this is really just as simple as a deprotonation process. So the way to think about it is that the carbon linked to lithium is a strong nucleophile and an extremely strong Bronsted base at the same time. We'll return to this point again and again that strong nucleophiles are also strong Bronsted bases. And so if we hit this with an organic compound that has a hydrogen that is more acidic than an alkane hydrogen, which is almost anything, right? Alkanes are the least acidic groups in organic chemistry pretty much that we've encountered, then a deprotonation process can take place. This generates a carb anion here, and this also generates Li plus at the same time. And so we could draw the resulting product as we have here with a carbon-lithium bond or a resonant structure that is honestly just as good and perhaps a little more illuminating is one in which we draw the phenyl fragment with a negative charge on the carbon that was deprotonated. Now notice this negative charge is associated with a lone pair living in a hybrid orbital on that carbon. The pi system of the benzene ring has been unaffected and we also have lithium plus there. So this alternative resonance form is just as good to draw for the organolithium and helps us see that the essence of the process is simply deprotonation by butyl lithium. Notice also that this reaction generates butane as a byproduct. And the nice thing about butane is it's very volatile, so it's very easy to get out of the reaction mixture just by heating. It's also pure hydrocarbon, whereas this is strongly ionic, so we can use the polarity difference between butane and the organolithium to separate them as well. Here's another example where we're again using butyl lithium to deprotonate a hydrocarbon. Here, the most acidic position is a terminal alkyne proton. And this is a highly favorable process since the pKa of the terminal alkyne is about 25, while the pKa of butane, this is somewhere up about 50, right? So heavily, heavily favored. And the basic idea mechanistically is still proton transfer. So once again, we can draw a resonance structure in which we break the carbon-lithium bond and we give both of those electrons to the more electronegative carbon, forming C- and Li+. We can also use butyl lithium to generate substituted organolithiums, like the compound you see on the right here. This reaction might look a little trickier than the ones above since we end up with lithium on oxygen rather than carbon, but a deprotonation at carbon has taken place. It's just that the anion we generate by deprotonating here is resonance stabilized. So we can draw a structure in which oxygen is negatively charged. And in fact, the negative charge is shared between carbon and oxygen. And once again, if we look at the product, this is an intermediate that we'll call an enolate. Specifically, this is a lithium enolate. We can draw a great resonance structure where the oxygen is negatively charged and the lithium is positively charged, O minus Li plus, and this was generated by breaking the OLI bond toward oxygen, making it negative and lithium positive. Once we've generated an organolithium species, which is an extremely strong carbon nucleophile, carbon base, it's relatively straightforward 
to transfer the organic group to another metal. This is called transmetallation, and it's a common strategy for synthesizing organometallic compounds. Say, for example, we wanted to synthesize phenyl Grignard reagent, in which we've replaced the carbon-lithium bond with a carbon-magnesium bond, say magnesium chloride. The carbon in the organolithium is a stronger nucleophile and stronger base than the carbon in the Grignard reagent. We can tell this because lithium is more electropositive than magnesium, and so the carbon has more partial negative charge in the organolithium and is more nucleophilic as a result. So what we can do with the organolithium is a simple nucleophilic substitution process at magnesium. We can treat with something like magnesium chloride, MgCl2, and this will generate the Grignard reagent and lithium chloride, Li plus Cl minus. This is transmetallation. And it works great as long as the organometallic compound we're generating is less reactive, less nucleophilic at carbon than the one we start with. And almost anything is less reactive than the corresponding organolithium compound. We could, for example, transmetallate this alkynolithium to copper using something like copper iodide. And here again, the mechanism is just nucleophilic substitution. The organolithium donates a pair of electrons at its nucleophilic carbon to copper, and the copper iodine bond breaks toward iodine, kicking it off as a leaving group. This generates the alkynyl copper species now, which is less reactive than the alkynyl lithium that we started with, as well as lithium iodide, Li plus, I minus. Transmetallation also works for other types of organolithiums involving, for example, resonance stabilization. So we could transmetallate this lithium enolate to something like zinc by treating with what we can kind of think of as a zinc electrophile like zinc chloride, ZnCl2, through a nucleophilic substitution mechanism again where the oxygen acts as a nucleophile and the zinc as an electrophile, we generate a zinc enolate along with lithium chloride, Li plus and Cl minus. So transmetallation from an organolithium, starting from an organolithium, is a great strategy for generating these less reactive organometallic compounds. A second strategy for the synthesis of organometallics involves the reaction of an organohalide with the metal zero species. In other words, the elemental metal, lithium zero, magnesium zero, or zinc zero. From a redox perspective, this amounts to the oxidation of the metal to, in these cases, the plus one or plus two oxidation state, and the reduction of the organohalide from something with a formal plus one oxidation state on the carbon linked to the halogen, more electronegative than carbon, to the minus one oxidation state with the carbon linked to an atom that is less electronegative than carbon. This is, for example, the most common mode of synthesis for Grignard reagents. We start with the corresponding organohalide, and this can be, by the way, the R group can be alkyl, aryl, so aromatic, heteroaromatic, alkenyl, so a carbon-carbon double bond, or even alkynyl, so hybridization doesn't really matter here. This can be any organohalide, and pretty much any of these can be converted into the corresponding Grignard reagent just by treatment with magnesium metal. I almost guarantee you that if you take an organic chemistry laboratory course, you will run this reaction. Finally, I wanted to mention one specific example of a transmetallation process for the synthesis of organocuprates. Organocuprates are unique because they contain two carbon groups linked to copper, and the complex as a whole has a negative charge. To do this, we use two equivalents of the strongly nucleophilic organolithium and a copper one salt. The basic idea here is that we start by doing the typical transmetallation type nucleophilic substitution. So the methyl anion essentially, as it's found in methyl lithium, donates a pair of electrons to copper and the copper iodine bond breaks toward iodine. This generates a neutral methyl copper species, CH3Cu, and in the presence of a second equivalent of methyl lithium, we get a coordination event an A sub N elementary step of the methyl anion to the copper. This gives an anionic copper species, that's why it's called a cuprate, containing two methyl groups linked to a copper one center, so the overall charge is negative one, and to balance that charge, the lithium plus ion, which really came along for the ride with the second 
methyl anion is there as well. Notice also that in this first step, we generated I minus and implicitly Li plus, and so lithium iodide is generated as a byproduct of this reaction. Organocuprates are unique because of copper's relatively low electropositivity or high electronegativity. So they're good nucleophiles at carbon, as are almost all organometallic reagents, but they're extremely mild and they can do certain things that more reactive organometallics cannot do. For example, organolithiums and Grignard reagents generally don't engage in SN2 reactions with primary alkyl halides. They do elimination instead, but organocuprates can be used for these fairly straightforward SN2 reactions where we form carbon-carbon bonds. And we'll see more on this later, but organocuprates don't add directly to the carbonyl carbons of alpha-beta unsaturated ketones and aldehydes. Instead, they add in a conjugate or 1,4 fashion, and this reactivity is really unique to the organocuprates among organometallic nucleophiles. We'll see more on that later in the course.